We've got Anthony Reese joining us from TNHA. How's it, Anthony? How's it, guys? Nice to be with you. Hey. Good to see you again. Hi, Anthony. Um, thanks for joining us tonight. Eh? Uh, I've got a few questions for you, but uh, you should uh, explain to us what, what happened. Was it on Friday that you got the, 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 the judgment? Yeah, it was actually Saturday morning I got the judgment. Uh, it was delivered to me by email on Saturday. Obviously, with COVID and the courts closed, they're not delivering judgments in the court anymore. And uh, it would have been a bit difficult to convene everyone back on, online. So we've got our electronic ju uh, judgment, which is uh, a rather impersonal uh, way to get your judgment. Bit of a, you don't get your day in court, you know, to 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 look into the face of your opponent when they when they hit their defeat. Okay, so but, and, um, and the, an we, we wanted to ask you uh, what the court case was about. You were in court with the Supra, and can you tell us what was the argument and then what was the result and the implications for cannabis? We launched an application uh, to the uh, Gauteng uh, North High Court um, in the jurisdiction of the minister and the SAPRA, um, in that the minister and the SAPRA were the respondents in this case. Um, the TNHA and, and a few other uh, interested groups got together and decided at some point that the complementary medicines regulations that had been uh, promulgated in 2013 and 2017 subsequently uh, was not working for the majority of the natural health product industry in South Africa in that the regulations were overburdening and were a capture all for all natural substances, whether animal, mineral or vegetable, basically saying that, you know, if, if you've got a health product on the market, you have to register it under a very restricted pharmaceutical registration regime, as well as license yourself to the hilt as a company, whether you import, manufacture, wholesale or retail such products. So the industry has really been crippled by this uh, sort of pharmaceutical expropriation of the industry, because what we've seen in the industry is that, you know, big pharma literally is, is taking over the best of products on the market that they are, the sort of uh, household brands, copying them, putting them out on the market. And and these kind of regulations are stifling the mom and pop businesses that started this industry up in South Africa and innovated this industry. So we were not happy with the regulations. It made it impossible financially, logistically to, to go and through this all these hoops, thick, 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 dense thickets of regulations that companies would have had to go through to comply. So we we approached the court, you know, and said it's, it's totally irrational, um, one, that a medicines regulator that has a, has a historical uh, backlog of pharmaceutical registration stemming back to 2002, essentially. Nine and a half thousand uh, pharmaceutical drugs also on another list that have never been tested since 1965 for their safety, quality, and effectiveness. So over 20,000 medicines in a backlog that this regulator hasn't been able to even look at or give a cursory glance to protect the public, yet it wants to regulate safe natural products that have been around for years with, with low uh, harm, no harm, high safety record, and wanting to basically use its energy in that regard. We basically said there needs to be a distinction in the Medicines Act that the Medicines Act was never designed since its exception in 1965 to regulate complementary medicines as they are today. Um, and the judge agreed essentially and rolled back the law to 1965 to say that a medicine is only a substance that claims to cure a disease uh, or, or prevent a disease as in the Medicines Act. And this whole new definition of complementary medicines and health supplements that came out in this regulatory regime is not in, not congruent or, or, or basically not in sync with the act itself. So she declared the complementary medicines, uh, Judge Kabushe, she declared the complementary medicines unlawful, uh, uh, regulations unlawful. Nice. That's fantastic. But, 
So essentially what happened, uh, unfortunately, is the second part of the judgment um, that she has basically stayed or, or um, uh, frozen the declaration of invalidity for 12 months in giving the SAPRA 12 and the minister 12, uh, 12 months to fix the, the error. Um, we don't believe that will be possible. Um, honestly, they would have to go and, and make an amendment to the Medicines Act in, in, in itself. That is a long, laborious process through Parliament, and we don't believe that will happen. And we will vigorously oppose that if that has to happen. So that's essentially where we are. It's a big uh, uh, breath of fresh air for us to, to vindicate the CNAJ, who have been saying this right from the beginning. I've been saying this since 1996, when the, when the previous Medicines Control Council on two previous occasions tried to do exactly this. This is this is something that you know has culminated in this case, and it's a huge victory for the natural health product sector, and a major victory for freedom of choice for people in South Africa to continue to access these products uh, without having to get a doctor's prescription for them in the future. Now that's really good news, Anthony. Yes. So, so how would you say this plays into CBD and also the licenses that the Sapra apparently are issuing? Well, the the SAPRA, the SAPRA, you know, the TNHA were involved in uh, May 2019 in essentially having CBD brought right down from Schedule Schedule Four down to an exclusion under certain parameters. Um, they changed their mind after that 12 months notice uh, when once it had expired and and pulled CBD into the complementary medicines regulations under. What they call category D medicines, which is all complementary medicines and health supplements. Um, but now that obviously this this the, the entire regulatory framework itself now is in serious question and has been declared invalid, um, CBD would naturally have to move into a new a slot, so to speak. We would ultimately like it to be excluded as it was previously. Yeah. There were no there was no demonstrable harm in the previous exclusion. We had no evidence of any harm of the, to the public, which warranted it to be put into a, a regulatory regime uh, that they imposed. So we will wait and see what happens over the next uh, coming weeks, uh, whether an appeal comes. We, we do expect an appeal. It's the government. Obviously, they love to appeal everything because they've got a huge bank of lawyers that's not costing them anything. But uh, let's see where it goes. And they'll wait until the last minute, obviously, as well. Wait, you know. No, while we wait. <laughs> well, we're ready. We're ready. Uh, just to let uh, all your members know and, and our members that may be watching here that we have uh, uh, secured the funding for an appeal. Uh, by the way, we won this this leg uh, with costs, so we won all our costs back on the case. Uh, right. It was a costs order against them. Um, and uh, obviously, we will use that in the appeal and uh, continue Fantastic. if need be. Oh, congratulations. Dude, well done. Well like, done. really, really heartfelt well done. High five. High five. <laughs> High five. High five. <laughs> <laughs> it's just, it's amazing. Yeah, well, look, it, it's been a lifelong journey for me. I, I started, you know, in activism, uh, trying to stop this kind of nonsense back in 96 in the first instance where they wanted to amend the Medicines Act to bring all these products in at that time. And a couple of years later, that specific amendment act was repealed. It was called the Sandra Act. Um, and it's it's been an ongoing struggle. Every couple of years, the regulator comes at you. Once they've been defeated, they they, re, they regroup, come up with a new angle, and, and try yeah. all over again and have institutional knowledge. And the people that were in the previous fight have gone away. I'm not going away. I've been at this for 24 years now, and I'm going to continue. It's so similar to the cannabis journey. It really is, and I think that's why we we support you guys so much as yes, well. We do. It's because it is yeah. it's a plant. We all Absolutely. just love our plant medicine. Mm -hmm. So, Anthony, do you think then now that CBD is being descheduled like that, how does it affect the licenses? Does it mean that licenses are, are invalid? Well, in terms of licenses for CBD. Uh, you don't need you don't need to register CBD as it currently stands within the the the, the framework that has been given of the less than twenty milligrams a day, less than six hundred milligrams per month. So no business less than license. THC, etc. Um, but it's sitting within the complementary medicines uh, uh, 
uh, category D. Um, but now category D has been declared unlawful. So it's very, you know, the SARP perhaps a year to fix it, and, and the judge technically has, you know, said that the SARP could continue for a year. That's something that is probably going to be put up on cross appeal. I don't think that you can say something is illegal. It's like uh, basically telling, uh, uh, saying bank robbery is is now illegal, but we're suspending it for 12 months. You can continue to rob banks. <laughs> and yeah. then after 12 months, you, you, you'll be free to go. You know, so, um, yeah, so, but, but look, the, the whole regulatory scheme for complementary medicines has now been put on quicksand. So whatever they try to build on this now, it, is, is, it has to fall at the end of the day. Yeah, that's good news. Yeah. Yeah, well, we completely support you, like, forever. So, <laughs> so you'll keep us updated going uh, forward. And, and, and likewise. <laughs> Honestly, and likewise. Um, for someone like myself who works with a lot of natural medicines and uh, complement complementary medicines, as you call it, um, thank you very much for your hard work. Uh, there would have been a lot of implications yeah. if, if it didn't go through. Yeah. Uh, my job wouldn't have been the same tomorrow, basically. So do you think we will see a difference on the shelves now? Or will there be a bigger variety? Will the prices change or the quality? Mm. Well, a medicine is still a medicine is a medicine according to the Section 1 of the Medicines Act. That hasn't been challenged at all. Um, so, essentially, if, if, you know, companies are going to have to strip any kind of medical claims of their products going forward to stay compliant. Uh, yeah. um, and that's one, of, that's one of the sacrifices that will be, have to be made. Um, but obviously, you know, if, if, you, if you're into education and educating the public, uh, you can obviously get around these things. Yeah. I think people that use, um, for example, say skeletium. I drink skeletium tea because yeah. I know it calms me down. And that's why I drink it. So it's not an uninformed purchase. I, I knew before I went to the health shop mm. that I want CBD tea, uh, uh, skeletium tea. And, and that's what I asked for. You know, uh, People that buy uh, these products are generally informed. Yes, mm. yes. Well, that's the thing, you see. So... You know, most most people who go looking for natural products have read about them on the internet, heard about it from friends, um, or read books, watched movies, whatever it may be. They're, you know, we've got a huge uh, interconnected world out there, and you can't they can't block this information. The Constitution guarantees the freedom of passing on information and the sharing of scientific ideas. So you know, they they can't get away get away from public education about these substances. And people can find these substances now when they want them and access them and use them without a doctor's prescription or worse, without not being available unless registered with a, 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 a medicines regulator. Because that pushes up the price because the compliance costs are so high. And the consumer would have been the loser in this instance because the tens of millions of rands that companies would have to spend to become compliant um, would have to be passed on to the consumer. And that would have made these types of substances inaccessible to the public uh, and to a vast uh, 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 amount of people. So this, this judgment allows people to continue to access these substances freely. Nice. As per their choice and their body and their right. <coughs> Good to get the information <coughs> straight from the horse's mouth. It really is. Really. Thank you very much for that. <laughs> Anthony, oh. thank you very much uh, for joining us on tonight's show. Tell me, uh, Anthony, you were telling us where we could find out more about TNHA and your work. Yeah, anybody can find us on the web on uh, tnha.co.za. Very, very simple. Great. And uh, TNHA is Traditional and Natural Health Alliance. Uh, Anthony, you guys are also affiliates of Fields of Green for All. Thank you for that. And uh, you said yep. that you'll be publishing a blog post with details about this judgment in the in the coming days, right? Uh, that's correct. So people can go there and find out what it, how it impacts their businesses and their health going forward. All right. We'll keep an eye on your Facebook page. Thank you very much for being with us tonight, Anthony. It's been wonderful chatting to you. Thank you so much. Thanks, guys. Keep up the good work. Yeah, you, too. you too. Thank, Thank you. you. Stay lit. All right. Cheers. Cheers, bye.